Hey everyone, Jamie here, and I wanted to do a quick video about Angular versus AngularJS. Alright, so I'm here at angular.io, and that is the official website for Angular. Okay, and it's just called Angular. AngularJS is something entirely different, which is right here on this website, angularjs.org. Okay, now AngularJS was the original version of Angular. Alright, and you can see right here on the homepage, the first thing they say is that you should try out the new Angular. So if I click on this, it actually just takes me to the angular.io website. So it should be immediately clear that um, AngularJS is the old legacy version of Angular and they want you to use the new one. All right, angular.io, um, which you just call it Angular. Everyone knows what you're talking about if you just say Angular. No need to say like Angular X or like Angular 2 plus. Um, it's, they just call it Angular, and then this one's called AngularJS. That's the naming conventions that they chose to use. And they're saying here that AngularJS is now in long-term support. Um, so if we say, what does this mean? We see here that it says they're focused on providing fixes to bugs that satisfy at least one of the following criteria. Security flaw, a major browser releases a version that will cause current applications to break. So just anything that's like breaking it. So it's just in maintenance mode, basically. So they're very focused now on Angular. All right, so AngularJS is very legacy. And having worked extensively with both of them, um, my old job I had a couple years back, um, I was writing exclusively AngularJS code, all right? And I was doing that for like two years. I mean, mostly, I wrote some backend code as well, um, but it was primarily just AngularJS code. Um, but if we click Get Started here, um, I want to compare the code that's in Angular to the code that's in AngularJS and give you guys kind of an idea about what improvements were made. All right, so let's look here at the fundamentals. All right, and let's just look at components. So we can see in Angular, um, this is the declaration of a component right here. All right, we've got some variables. All right, and by the way, a component is just like a piece of the page in Angular. So we've got some variables. All right, then the other part is like the HTML for the component. So this is pulling out variables from the TypeScript and it's just your standard HTML with, you know, some Angular specific things in here like ngif. So this, this is a conditionally shown element right here. Okay, so that's kind of the main two pieces. This is the HTML and this is the logic or the TypeScript for the component. So those are the two main pieces. That's how they look. All right, then if I go up here to the developer guide and then go down to directives right here, directives are kind of like components are in Angular. I mean, Angular actually has its own directives as well, but I would say the new components are kind of more similar to the old directives, um, interestingly enough. So like it says here, a directive is um, a marker on the DOM, which tells Angular to basically like substitute or transform that DOM element into like the code which is declared in the directive. So looking at an example here, this is an example directive. All right, this is the HTML code. And then they also have JavaScript as well. So that's one of the major differences is that um, Angular moved over to TypeScript, as you can see, .ts. And that's why we have keywords like class, okay, and like the name of this class, and then like typing like this, super nice so that you know um, what type each variable is as you're going through your code. That way autocomplete is a lot better um, and even exists at all. And so you can see the old way was a lot more dependent on strings, whereas the new way has like these types, which is a huge improvement. All right, so that's one major difference. And then here it's saying that this is how we um, substitute that directive into like wherever we want to use it in our code. And that's exactly the same between both of them. So like here is the syntax in Angular for um, showing the app hero detail component. All right, and that's very similar to this right here where it just says my dir for my directive. All right, and this one is also passing in a variable, but this other example over here is not. All right, and with the directive, I remember you also had to declare a controller as well. So it had both a controller and a directive. 
So it's kind of just a lot more convoluted, whereas this new way is just simply, um, you just have a single component right here with a HTML file, a TypeScript file, and a SCSS file, or whatever kind of styling file you want to use. All right, then let's have a look at the modules as well. So back in AngularJS, a module was a container for different parts of the app, so it hasn't really changed that much. Um, it's a container for controllers, services, filters, uh, directives, and so forth. And let's have a look at Angular modules now. So you can see here that it, it's kind of just the same thing. It's declaring things, like it declares a component right here. It can export things. All right, it can import things as well. So kind of a similar idea. A lot of difference in the syntax, though. This is the old syntax. This is the new syntax. All right, so lots of improvements there as well. All right, and both Angular and AngularJS could import different modules and so forth. Like they were both modular, um, but Angular 2 just has a big cleanup on the syntax. And guys, this is another reason why I recommend Angular so highly is because Angular as a framework, they learned so much from like building this original version. Um, they went through a lot of iterations and then they finally realized, well, all right, we know what we did wrong and we're going to fix it by doing Angular now. And so even though Angular is the sequel to AngularJS, I think it's extremely unlikely that there will be any sort of major shift away from Angular because everything they wanted to do, they really did it in this big leap from Angular AngularJS to Angular. All right, and down here at the bottom, you can see that there have been many different versions of Angular. So there was two. They skipped three for some reason, not sure exactly why. And then we got four, five, six. All right, now we're at seven. And so that is one reason why I recommend Angular so highly is because they've been around for a while. They know what's going on. All right, their syntax is getting dialed in. They've had so many versions, so many chances to improve. And it really is a state-of-the-art tool now, um, not to mention it's just very intuitive to program in, for me at least. We still get to use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript fundamentally even though JavaScript has been augmented a little bit to make it a lot better in TypeScript. And CSS has been augmented to support SCSS as well. So it's really just a state-of-the-art tool, which I find very intuitive. Um, and I'm sure you guys as well, if you haven't given it a shot, I highly recommend it. Okay, and guys, that's all I have for this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think about Angular as a framework? Um, have you used AngularJS before? What do you think about the new one, the new Angular? All right, guys, that's it. Remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.